um, for one reason because it was such a monumental moment in the future of the Jewish people. Instead of entering the land that year, they are spending another 39 years for a total of 40 years wandering the desert, unable to enter the land. In fact, the, that whole generation and the spies themselves did not enter the land. So what happened that was such a um, fantastic event that had such far-reaching impact? And also, of course, what relevance does it have to us living you know, in the year 2020 today? So let's take a look for a moment and see what actually happened in the story of the 12 spies. Um, Moshe had asked God for permission to send these spies. The people were told they're going to be entering the promised land, but yet they were a little bit concerned about it. What would it be like? And so they asked permission to send spies. God said, fine, if that's what you want to do, you could send for yourself spies. And there's so many teachings and every nuance of the conversation between Moshe and God, but we're going to focus for a moment on the um, actions of the spies. And Moshe gives them a very specific list of what they're to look out for when they go to the land of Israel. They need to check and see what is the land like, what are the inhabitants like, and so on and so forth. And off they go to the land of Israel, charged with this very sacred mission on behalf of the Jewish people. And they come back and they report to the Jewish people and they say, the land is beautiful, it is flowing with milk and honey, its produce is huge, but the people are huge, the inhabitants are very strong, and there's no way that we can conquer them. And these words were so demoralizing to the Jewish people that they began to cry and wail and weep and mourn about this terrible situation that God had put them into. They were going to have to go to this promised land that was going to be impossible to conquer and that it was really just a horrible thing that they were now just devastated from. And as a result of this, as we said earlier, um, none of the, the tribes, none of the spies, excuse me, nor the actual people of that generation were able to enter the land. What did they do, though, that was so terrible? Wasn't their job to go and spy out the land and come back and report? So for what? For not having a good report, they were, they were guilty? They told the truth of what they saw. So had they just told the truth of what they saw and just observed and reported their observance, that would have been fine. The problem is they started adding their own opinion into it. They started to add in their own commentaries, their own perspectives, their own thoughts. They came back and said, the land is tremendous. The, the, the produce is huge. The inhabitants are huge. And they didn't say, we're going to have to really strategize how we're going to conquer it. Instead, they added a different opinion saying, it is impossible for us to conquer it. We're not going to make it. And they just simply demoralized the people. God was giving them the promised land. God told them, this is the land that you're going to enter. It wasn't for them to start giving opinions as to whether or not it would be possible to enter it when God said they would enter it. What was up to, thus, what was up to them to determine was how they were going to enter it. What was going to be the strategy? How was it going to take place? Not to start doubting and wondering if we can do that. Because what happened when they did? They demoralized all the Jewish people. And we all have in our lives areas that need to be conquered whether it's internally whether areas of our within our personalities that we need to kind of refine into the holy land or challenges in our life that need to be transformed into holiness on whatever level that might be whether it's a spiritual one a relationship one a personal one there are areas in our life that we need to make into a holy land the question is not if we can do it the question is how we can do it if God put those areas in our life, if God put those seemingly, those seeming challenges in our life that we are meant to overcome and turn into a place of beauty and holiness, that means he gave with us the wherewithal to do it. And it's not for us to be saying, it's impossible. How am I ever gonna overcome that challenge? That accomplishes one thing, demoralization, as we saw with even the holiest of the Jewish people. What he does want us to do is to say, how, with the strengths that God gave me, and the abilities that I have, and the people in my life that can add input to, it, to me, how am I going to make this challenge into something of great beauty? Not if I can do it, but how. And I think that if we f 
face the challenges that we have in our life with the approach of how can we do it instead of if, guaranteed we're going to make them happen. Because if Hashem presented them to us, that was meant we were meant to enter them and we were meant to achieve them. And I can just give you a small example from our life here as, as I guess you can say that we are in a sense the shluchim, the spies, so to speak, the messengers of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He sent us here. And if you remember, not too long ago, the shul was in our house. It was in our nice little living room, served as a wonderful shul in the beginning. But then we very quickly outgrew that and we were really trying to find a place to lease, to rent, to utilize as a shul. And it was quite the struggle until Miles Sterling found this wonderful little unit for us that would be perfect, except we ran into about 15 different obstacles with that. But Rabbi Paltiel's attitude was never, can we do this? He said, this place is perfect for us. How are we gonna make it happen? And through trying this venue and that venue and trying all different means to accomplish it, I remember thinking this man is gonna make it happen because he's not looking at himself and saying, can I do this? Is it too much for me? He's looking in the mirror and he said, you can make this happen. How are you gonna make it happen? Who do you have to talk to? Who do you have to approach? Who do you have to negotiate with to allow this to happen? And the proof is in the pudding. It happened. And I have no doubt that now as we reach the next challenge in our shlichut, our next challenge in our growth of our community, and we have to find a permanent home for ourselves, it's going to be with the same results. That we're going to look at it and say, Chabal Lugun is ready for a permanent home, a real home. Not can we do it, but how are we going to do it? How are we going to make this happen? So whether we're talking about our personal growth, we're talking about it as a growth as a community, there's no doubt that the Torah portion of this week is teaching us that if God put a challenge in front of you, he also gave you the wherewithal to succeed. Don't come back with a report saying, it's too much for me, I can't do it. Come back with a report and saying, this is my strategy that I gotta try. And God will bless you and you will be successful. So I wish you all a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you very much, Craney. Just to echo what Craney said, this is another thing, one of many, many, that the Rebbe would always remind us, and he, as the leader of our generation, always look, looked to point out to each individual the greatness that lies within everybody, the great godly potential, so that hopefully he, he succeeded, and he did succeed in making us each leaders and seeing the great godly potential that we each have. Because oftentimes we don't see it in ourselves or we doubt ourselves or we were faced with a similar challenge in our youth and we kind of gave up and said, that's not for me. One of the, one of the great, um, the, the, the mission, uh, the mandate, if you will, of a Moshe Rabbeinu, of the leader of our generation, and certainly in the case of the Rebbe, was to highlight the great godly potential that lies within each and every one of us so that we could then go and maximize that potential and not doubt whether or not the path that God Almighty put us on, it was really divinely ordained. But to know for sure that it came from Hashem and it's incumbent upon us only to take the initiative and to believe in ourselves, not independent of our Mishaleach, of the one who sent us, but to know that it ha it's Hashem who put us on this path. And because He put us on this path, He first equips us with the wherewithal, the ability to be successful on our endeavor. Thank you very much, Craney. I'm going to now unmute.